Hey YouTube, coming at you what has been my most successful Ultra League Premier team so far. Um, and that is ACN slash Tentacruel and Glizcor. And I actually built up, so if you see the IVs, that is my uh, Great League Tentacruel that I built up. And I just built up good Glizcor. I actually did not have good IVs for Gligar, so I just built up one of, one of the heavier ones, attack heavy ones. Um, yeah, but this team did very, very well for me. There is some sort of, like, you're double weak to ground in Sand Slash and Tentacruel. So like ground type Pokemon are a little tricky. But outside of that, you got like a couple answers for fairies. You got a couple answers for the ice, if Gl which Gliscor is weak to. Uh, you got a couple answers for fighters in Tentacruel and Gliscor, right? So there's, they really handle a lot of what is the current state of the premier meta. So let's look at some battles. Galvantula, um, sort of a neutral lead, definitely just gonna stay in here. Um, you can live one discharge for sure. Uh, one drone's not going to take out, so it probably just makes more sense to go two ice punches. Because I think two ice punches with the shadows should take out. Um, and they shield. Once they shield once, I know I'm only going to get one more move off, so I might as well just go for the heavier hitting drill run. Um, and they double shield, which is interesting. So they will take me out. So now Glizcor is obviously the answer as a flyer, but the ground new like actually is double resisted, so that this will single resist. So they just go lunge to lower my attack, and out comes Mandibuzz. Um, and Tentacruel is a decent answer for Mandibuzz. A couple Scalds from the Shadow basically puts it down. Excuse me. Oh, man, I showed up foul play. I would normally never ever shield up Amanda Buzz, but ever since the majority of them now run Dark Pulse, Dark Pulse like really adds up quickly. So I am um, more likely to shield up a Dark Pulse from Amanda Buzz than I have ever been in the past. Um, this one is just running foul play. Gonna farm up a bit, knowing that the Galv is gonna come back in. Switch timer is hopefully up so I can auto switch or Hmm. Let's see what I want to do here. Just let it go, and then sh they lunge me. I end up being able to lower their. I'm surprised I didn't bank, like, uh, just get out. I do manage to farm down, and what's in the back? Of course, the Feraligatr's in the back. I'm running Night Slash and Earthquake. So Gliscor is an interesting one. Um. Because it's it's really to be the plane at night slash. So why it's like slightly worse? Let me just prop prop up the next battle and then I'll talk about the move set here. So good lead here. Sort of. You think like this is an amazing lead, but then you take these meter meshes, which are actually neutral because you are half fairy. Not no, because you are half ice. Um, and the drones only do like fifty percent, and these meter meshes do more than fifty percent. So or no, actually just about fifty percent. So it's actually like a way closer matchup than you would like to have against a fairy, quite honestly. So I'm going to just stand here and then we'll see who wins which. Gliscor. Wing attack, earthquake, I think are musts. Um, if you're going to have a ground flyer, you need that ground coverage, right? That's kind of not even up for debate. What's up for debate is a stab, aerial ace, or night slash. So the trade-off is night slash is a less hard hitting move for quicker energy and a chance for a boost and at least you get stabbed so it's overall harder hitting but it's a little more energy and obviously no chance to bump your attack or anything so those are the trade-offs um i haven't used sorry i haven't used night slash it was okay the, the, if you've used gligar in the great league you'll be disappointed with um, Gliscor in the Ultra League, I think. Because they're really, really, really different. Um, just like, it just feels like Gligar just getting to quicker digs um, is really, really strong. And then like Aerial Ace in the Great League does a good amount, whereas like Night Slash or Aerial Ace here in the Ultra League probably doesn't do too much against these bulkier Pokemon, right? So with Gliscor, you're really just kind of relying on its typing 
flying ground is is a pretty unique good typing um mixed with that sort of like wing attack earthquake combo which is quite strong and then tentacle yeah tentacle i think is one that why am i yawning so much like i know it's nighttime but come on man it's, it's also just because like all the easter weekend traveling and i got up early for work today and and office day and so just tired uh good lead here for alligator yeah i was about to say tentacruel is the answer i was getting a few claws on sand slash to get energy but then tentacruel coming in here for taking these hmm looks like they have another option that's not hydro cannon so i thought i would come and take resisted hydros they have crunch so that makes this way trickier um yeah, Tentacruel rose up the rankings a lot. Um, and now it's like quite, quite strong in, I think, both the Ultra League and the Open Ultra. Like the Premier and the Ultra. I just think that like it's picking up a spot that Nidoqueen left open, right? You had Nidoqueen, which was the go-to poison. Everyone used it. Like, everyone used Nidoqueen in both the Great League and Ultra League. And then they nerfed it, and it made it basically unusable. And so they needed a poison to tiny tape this place. Like, some people still use, like, Drapion and Skunk to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, for the most part, people are just using Tentacruel as their main poison now. They let the drill run. I was going to say they let the drill run go. They didn't let it go. They have no shields left. Glizcore going to take these brutal swings quite easily. Just get the full farm down. Come out with energy. Take out what is left of the Pidgeot. So I didn't really want this team to have eight minutes of video. Oh my goodness. I guess not surprising. I've only done six minutes. It just feels like an hour because I'm just so tired. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see the next one. Annihilate. Terrible lead. Who's your safe swap? I think Gliscor is a pretty good safe swap. So this is a really bad response. Like, Muck's not a good answer to Gliscor. Obviously resisting the poison because of ground. Um, I, I feel like that was like an instant swap where they like... They saw me swap and they're like, Oh, I've got a poison. That's going to be terrible against Sand Slash. Because he's steel. So I'm going to go into that. But then it's like, oh no. Going into a ground is not like the best matchup here. Um, so yeah, Glisscore is your safe swap. As a safe swap, I think it's pretty strong, right? The worst case scenario and why you might want to run... Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. I would... If, it, if I cared about quality and not rambling and being uncut here, I would cut some of these yawns out, but... Ain't nobody got time for that. Anyways, Glizcore is a decent safe swap. The only problem I can see up the top of my head running Night Slash Earthquake is against a Mandibuzz. Because Mandibuzz will resist your entire moveset. So from that perspective, you may want to go Aerial Ace. Tentacruel can also be an okay safe swap. Because... The stuff that resists you, you can at least hit neutral or super effective on, right? So I'm thinking ground, you'll hit super effective on. Ghost resists you. And steel resists you. As long as they don't have some sort of secondary typing, Scald is still neutral. So it's, Tentacruel is not a bad one. And in open, in open Ultra Premiere, not, Jesus. In open Ultra a lot of people run Scald Blizzard to really give you some coverage there. Obviously, that limits you against waters and stuff, but you're probably limited against waters anyways. My, <laughs> I, I could see myself just shaking on them, and it's because I currently have two, oh my god, wait. You can hear my other kid crying. I've got two little teacups below my feet right now. 
We got a whole set here that are at my feet. So I'm just playing with them because I got this table in the corner of the basement that also acts as my um, table that I use for work when I work from home. And my daughter has made it into a little house. Okay, I guess. Okay, you know what? We're going to do this because if, if you're watching the bells, you're watching the bells. If you're watching me, you're going for a little ride here. I'll try and keep this as still as I can. Anyways, this is the basement. But she has made it into a little area for her puppies and stuff. So this is right now what I'm under the bed. Yes. This is my setup. Ghetto. I know. This is <laughs> this is truly truly the work of someone who truly just does this on the side and not and as his main job. Como maybe I should have run it with Aerialis. I find that nice slash is useless. So like you're just using it to try and boost most of the time. So I think I probably should have run you know, air lace on it. Anyways, with four minutes left in my battles. Yeah. This is my setup, my basement, which is a mess right now. It's 10, what time is that? Like 10, 15 at night right now. I have not been able to catch up on videos. So like I have multiple premiere teams. I got at least another one with Lick, Licky Licky. Um, which I'm guessing you're going to see probably tomorrow and a couple more great league teams that I've been running too, but I just, I can't catch up on these videos because I was gone all weekend and then Tuesday I was in the office and then tomorrow I'm home, but my wife's got an appointment in the morning. So it's not like, I, and I'm working obviously, but so it's not like I can train me and sneak a video in there. So even though I got a lot of videos, I just got to kind of do it for next week. Where, why is this set up weird? Is this a new OBS thing that kind of... Or is that just, I don't know. Anyways, this is very, very, very all over the place. I'm aware of that. Charizard. Sandslash is... I've always had a love-hate relationship with Sandslash because I always found it useless because of this, like, you're double weak to fighting and you're double weak to fire and it's just, like, all adds up very quickly on you but you can really like shadow claw is really fast charging ice punch and draw run great coverage um i guess i should have labeled shadow claws as, as a community move so it really can do a lot of damage as long as you don't get like a fighter on you but yeah i'm actually tentacool Tentacle more than Gliscor, I'm actually good, glad it's on my like roster for Ultra League now. Um, so I think it's pretty strong. Lantern. I guess I shouldn't be surprised how many people have Lantern because it is everywhere and stuff. But the investment into these Pokemon. Although the the interesting is. It's an investment to a lot of these Pokemon. And it's obviously Dust Candy, XL Candy, all important for you in the Ultra League. They actually have not changed up. Like, if you've been doing this as long as I have, and the longer you do GBL and the more you build up, it's not like you're actually having to build a lot of new Pokemon each season. Like, just to give you an example, they've buffed essentially like five, five, they've buffed a bunch of Pokemon, but five that actually had play. Actually, only like four really had play. Feraligator, which was one that um, a lot of people had from Community Day, just probably didn't have it built because it was useless, but now it's really strong with Shadow Claw. But then there was like Empoleon, if you've been playing since the beginning, you had it. Gallade, if you've been playing since the beginning, you had it. Um... So there's only like really like one or two Pokemon per season 
that actually requires like, oh, I actually need to invest in this because it has become like meta. Like it was like poly It was like, but even whiz cash, like I already had a whiz cash before it got scald buff. And like the polyrath, same thing. Like I've had it, but it was just not like super meta relevant. So there's like a lot of the Pokemon that are, unless they like really bring something out of obscurity, um, like really buff a Pokemon that is just otherwise completely useless. For the most part, if you've been playing for a while, you have a lot of these Pokemon. Anyways, I apologize for this video. Even I know there are certain videos. <laughs> that when I'm in what I'm doing them I can just tell like what kind of videos they're going to be like sometimes I'm like I'm really going to analyze the battles and sometimes I'm like I'm really going to focus on the stat products and understanding the ins and outs of all the Pokemon and why they work and not work and then there's this one where it's just like I'm yawning my brain is fog right now I'm putting this out just to have a video tomorrow and I feel like this video like reads like that <laughs> or like plays like that i guess i should say so yeah sorry that's not my best work but anyways i'll have at least one more ultra league premiere team tomorrow and then is tomorrow already thursday yeah i guess tomorrow's thursday so then there's league turnover so i gotta do top videos for that anyways that's it thanks for watching see you guys in the next one